In this step, entitled Chick Picks, we will take a look at the domestic chick as the model of innate preferences. Nature or nurture? How much of each? How can we study this? When studying the well-known nature versus nurture issue, some species of animals are particularly useful. I'm referring to precocial species, those that are completely independent at birth. Those animals are able to move as soon as they are born, a fact that allows us to investigate newborn individual with the same methodology of an adult one, a rare opportunity that we don't have with humans. In the last decades, domestic chicks have become the most prominent model in the study of inborn cognitive abilities. Chicks don't need parental care, as soon as they hatch, they are able to survive on their own. They can eat and drink on their own and even walk around from the first day of their little lives. Their vision is also very good right out of the shell. In a few words, they are perfect to be tested in this field. I told you that chicks count for psychologists, but in this case I'm referring to chicks' ability to do simple mathematical calculations. Several studies show that chicks can add and subtract numerical information in different contexts, as many other animals do. Chicks can distinguish between two and three dots, and they can also count the number of social companions they can see. Well, you know what? People seem to represent numbers as different visuospatial forms, typically organized along a so-called mental number line which is a horizontal continuum oriented from the left, for smaller numbers, to right, for large numbers. In short, if I ask you how do you represent numbers, you may typically respond as a line with numbers oriented from left to right. For decades, psychologists thought it was a cultural phenomenon. We learned to read from left to right, therefore it's easier for us to represent numbers from left to right. But how? sure we are of this. Recently, Ruganian colleagues found that the mental number line oriented from left to right is present at birth in a vertebrate brain. Three-day-old chicks were initially trained to find food behind a panel bearing five spots. Then, they were confronted with two arrays bearing different numbers of spots. When faced with two arrays that have only two spots each, the birds consistently look behind the left of the two panels, but when faced with eight spots on each panel, they were poking around the right panel. It seems that chicks have an inborn representation of numbers from left to right. Small numbers are represented on the left of the visual field, for this reason they search for number two on the left, while large numbers are represented on the right, hence they look for the large numbers on the right visual field. This is important because if we want to develop a model to study mathematical abilities, we need not only a species that has numerical abilities, but also a species with similar mental representation of numbers compared to humans. And domestic chicks seem to satisfy this criterion. Another thing, people can easily spot if a living organism is in front of them just by observing motion cues, the so-called biological motion. This can happen even with laboratory stimuli in which the patterns are distilled to just a few animated dots against a black background. We can even tell the gender and emotional state of an abstract human figure simply by its movement. Because we can discern so much from such a sparse information, scientists think specialized neural circuitry is at work. But it is not clear whether the ability is innate or learned. The first response to this issue comes from animal studies. Balortigara and collaborators took chicks and gave them a choice between two computer screens, one that show a dot animation of a hand walking, and one that show either a dotted hand shape rotating around an axis or dots moving at random. The chicks prefer to move toward the walking hand, even though they never have seen a hand before. Interestingly, the chicks didn't show any preference between the motion of a chick or that of a cat, which is a potential predator. So this demonstrates an inborn preference for following living organisms per se. So this is not species-specific. 
probably having a species-specific mechanism would have been expensive in terms of pre-wired cognitive equipment, so animals develop a preference for a general biological motion. In most of the cases, the first animal close to us, as soon as we are born, is uh, our mother. The stimuli used in chicks were later presented to human newborns by Simeon and colleagues. Interestingly, even newborns look longer at the walking hand, showing a spontaneous preference for the biological motion of a vertebrate. Again, this is not conspecific. Babies demonstrate attraction to a walking animal, showing that we, like chicks, are not equipped to prefer the movements of our conspecifics. So we can really say that chicks helped pave the way for this important discovery in developmental psychology. Now, let's have a break and listen to some good music. find this so good. The kinds of sound that humans tend to find pleasant are described as consonant, which are different from unpleasant sounds, which are called dissonant. Two-month-old babies prefer to listen to consonant music rather than dissonant music, so we already know this is found in humans. However, the question remains as to whether the preference for consonant music is fundamental to the properties of the auditory system, or if the preference for consonant music is a product of culture or experience. Even though two-month-old babies haven't had that much experience with music, it is still possible that their preference for consonant music could have developed very fast after birth, or even while still in utero. The best way to test whether or not the preference for consonant music is innate or learned by experience is through a controlled reading study, in which animals are raised from birth in a controlled environment. It is impossible to raise a human in this way, but it is possible to do this with chicks. And this is exactly what Chiandetti and Valortigara did. At the end of the testing cage there were two speakers. One speaker played a consonant version of a melody and the other played a dissonant version of the same melody. After listening to the sounds for half a minute, the chicks was given six minutes to approach one of the two sides of the cage, while the music continued to play. For the first four minutes of the six minutes testing period, the chicks tend to freeze where they have been placed in the center of the testing cage, which is consistent with a natural fear response due to a new situation. However, after calming down, during minutes 5 and 6, the chicks chose to approach and spend more time on the side of the cage playing consonant music more often than the sides playing dissonant music. By the chick study we may suppose there is an innate preference for consonant sounds that is independent of experience. These are just some examples of the contribution of chicks to the hot topic in psychology of the prevaried cognitive ability present in birth in the absence of experience. If you want to list another example in which researchers use chicks in this field, listen to the podcast by Cinzia Chiandetti, Are You Born With a Natural GPS? <laughs>